for your patience. The first person I'd like to introduce to speak today is our Chief of Police, Chief Malik Aziz. Good afternoon. Thank you for being here today. And thank you to all the community members uh, who are watching on social media. The murder of 16-year-old Jada Madrona Moore on Monday was a shock to our entire community. It was a shock to myself and the police department. She was a bright student, a great athlete with even a brighter future. And now we know it was another juvenile armed with a gun who stole her future and shattered her family. I'd like to thank the Homicide Unit, Major Crimes Division Homicide Unit, who are behind me, Lieutenant King, Sergeant Watts, Detective Thompson, Detective Tracy, Detective Bays, and our lead Detective Shepard for their dedicated work to making an arrest in this case. They were committed to arresting the person responsible for killing Jada. Yesterday evening, they did. Detectives arrested a 17-year-old male from Glen Arden for her murder. He is charged as an adult. On September 11th, right after school, our officers responded to a call for a shooting in the 9800 block of Palomar Drive. Jada was located suffering a gunshot wound and pronounced deceased at the hospital. Through various investigative techniques, as well as information provided anonymously to Prince George's County Crime Solvers, Homicide Unit detectives identified and arrested the juvenile suspect Thursday evening. The preliminary investigation revealed the victim was walking on Palomar Drive after leaving school when a fight ensued between two groups who were involved in an ongoing dispute. During the fight, the suspect produced a gun. Detectives believe the victim attempted to intervene when she was shot. The juvenile suspect is charged with first and second degree murder, first and second degree assault, and a firearms charge. It seems like we are here way too often, and I'm frustrated that the violent few are disrupting the education and the promising future of our great children of Prince George's County. Now that we've made this arrest, we are hoping to bring some degree of comfort to the family as we start this process, as we pass the baton to our state attorney uh, to start the next step of justice. And we'll be following this case throughout, and we'll be monitoring everything that goes on with this case. For now, I'll pass it over to uh, our county executive for a few remarks. Good afternoon. Um, I'd like to first begin um, by expressing the grief that I think is a collective grief um, in our community um, regarding the death of Jada Medrano Moore. Um, Jada was a star. I mean, in every sense of the word, she was a star in her school. She was a star as a part of Team Elite. Um, she was a star in our community. And on the day of this incident, she was a star yet again and gave her life there trying to defuse this particular incident. Um, it, it goes without saying that all of us are just speechless and we are just so devastated and so angry about the loss of Jada. It shouldn't have happened. It didn't have to happen. Um, what I can tell you as well is that I am just so proud of the men and women who investigated uh, this case and who continue day in and day out um, to do their very best to investigate these cases, to begin to bring closure by way of arrest. Um, the Prince George's County Police Department, led by the folks in this unit, now have above 70 percent closure rate, rate, which is an outstanding rate. More than seven out of ten of these cases have resulted already in arrest. Um, and so I want to thank them. I want to thank Chief Aziz uh, for his leadership uh, and thank them for what they continue to do. Um, I also would like to say that we are looking forward to, um, to having our state's attorney and her team who have been uh, involved as well in this investigation all along the way to bring justice to this family. And I can tell you that from the government standpoint, we continue to invest in the youth of our community. Uh, we have done so by way of sparing no expense to make sure that our children have every opportunity available to them through the Summer Youth Enrichment Program, where we have now hired every single child who applied for that program. 
um, from the passport program where we are providing opportunities to our kids. We have opened a new mental health care and addictions care facility and are expanding beds to make sure that our kids have the opportunity to receive those services, telehealth services that we're providing now at the school so that families who were not able to get out during the day can then have those appointments virtually. Uh, we have invested dollars in the hope in action. So we have violence interrupters, after school programming. We have 15 or 16 nonprofits who are joining us um, to do this work of making sure we continue to spare no expense in funding programs that we believe will disrupt violence and give our kids opportunities to grow, develop, and to live. Um, but it goes without saying, and I have said it now and will continue to say it until I am blue in the face, that we cannot do any of this work without the families, without our community members, uh, who, by the way, really did step up even in this case. Um, we, I am told that we had more calls than we could even field. Um, from members of our community who called in to give their assistance, to give information. So I want to thank the public uh, for helping us uh, in this case, but it's going to take so much more of that to stem the violence that we are seeing, especially escalating among our children. Um, I hear all the time, what else is it that the government can do? And let me just tell you this, this issue will not be resolved simply by the government. It will not be resolved by the police. It cannot just be resolved by the state's attorney. It must be resolved in the homes and in the communities of these children, um, from their parents to the aunties, uncles, godparents, everybody has a responsibility to protect our children to protect their lives and to prevent them from taking the lives of other children. Um, so we will continue to do our part in, in investing in our children, in uh, investigating these cases, prosecuting the cases, and then we ask the community to continue to do your part because that's the only way we're going to stop this violence and preserve the precious lives. Our kids are too precious, too precious to give over to violence. And uh, now we'll, I'm going to just turn it over, please, to our state's attorney, Aisha Brave Boy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Madam County Executive, and also to my partner, uh, Chief Aziz. Uh, as the chief uh, remarked earlier, we're here yet again for another press conference centered around senseless acts of violence involving young people in our communities for crimes that carry life sentences. I want to make that point very clear. These are serious crimes that carry life sentences. To our young people, you are not outsmarting the police. You are not outmaneuvering prosecutors. You will not scare your peers into silence they will speak up and they have spoken up in this case. And then you will be held accountable. You know, it is now our uh, op turn in this justice process as prosecutors uh, to see this case through. Uh, we work continuously with our police department as we continue to investigate any case, even after charges are filed. But it's really the community. We are anchored by you. We are anchored by the community and you will help us deliver justice for, J for Jada Madrano Moore. I am confident that with the help of this community, we can get justice. But also with the help of this community, we want to save lives. I love our young people. I care about them. I grew up in this community too. So I see myself reflected in every young person in our public school system here in Prince George's County. And I know their potential. I know it. I'm one of you. I'm one of you. But you have to understand we have a job to do, which is to protect our community and so when you make decisions we have to make decisions and the decision of my office is to hold you fully accountable and responsible for your actions so just understand this is not the first time it's not the second time unfortunately we have in many cases held young people accountable for adult crimes in adult court 
So it's really important that our young people understand that and know that the decisions you make can and will affect the rest of your lives. So thank you very much um, again to all my partners and I believe I'm passing it over to our new superintendent. Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon. Um, as our um, district attorney indicated, I'm Millard House, the uh, superintendent of schools with the Prince George's County School District. And I want to start off just simply thanking uh, the leadership of our police department. Um, our police department is a dedicated, uh, focused uh, organization that truly did the work that was necessary to ensure that uh, we brought uh, the perpetrator to, uh, to justice in this particular case. Uh, we do, unfortunately, have the, the loss of a, of a life, a, a sister, a, a daughter, a, a sibling, an uh, individual that had befriended several individuals in this community, and that is a tragic, tragic situation. As you may know, Jada was a PGCPS student, and, and this accomplishment in terms of cracking this case truly underscores their uh, commitment in terms of the police department in reference to safety and justice within our community. I think you heard it from our county executive, you heard it from our, uh, our, our, our top attorney in this community, that this is extremely important as we move forward in terms of the safety of our community. As superintendent, uh, I'll be calling upon community leaders to, to really unite and work together collaboratively in an effort to ensure that, uh, that we, can, we can be only uh, as focused as we can be to achieve what's necessary to have our students in a safe environment. Uh, I want to also ensure that we're working together and, and continue to make the efforts that we need ensure, ensuring that our schools, our neighborhoods, our communities are as safe as possible. Uh, as superintendent, I am committed uh, to making certain that I work closely uh, with all of the leaders that you see uh, before us today uh, to make certain that that does happen. And with that being said, I'll turn it back over to Chief and just again a big thank you to everybody involved behind us in reference to the efforts uh, that have occurred over the course of the last four and a half days. Thank you. With that, we'll take a few questions. No. Right here first. Um, I have a bunch. Uh, we'll just get one right now. It's a lot of people in the room. Well, I can confirm I don't know how this person got the gun right now. Uh, it's still a, an active investigation, uh, and that person is not talking to us at this point, uh, so we don't know how that gun was obtained at this point. Uh, as far as it was he a student, I think the school system would be better to uh, confirm what, what, was he a student or not. Step, step over here? Yeah, just step over here. We had a super step over here. The, the victim was a Duval High School student, and uh, the uh, assailant uh, was a uh, Flowers High School student. Okay, thank you. Sure. As far as we know, the answer is no. We don't have any record that we have or we have obtained that says he had been handled by us, uh, was any uh, habitual student, uh, a, a violator, or, or anything like that at this point in time. This does not appear to be that case. Can you tell us anything about uh, the uh, alleged beef that was going on between these two groups, the other individuals that collided? Share with us anything about the local school? Well, from what we know now with some type of petty beef and in involving you know individuals as young people get involved in with each other uh, somebody said this uh, it's maybe a, a, another you know uh, opposite sex involved uh, all those kinds of things have come into play with these two groups who are fighting for, for really no reason uh, we've seen this before through throughout history uh, where young people have become involved in, in altercations that have been verbal and then they have turned to fights, fist fights. Uh, it is going to school is a great opportunity. It's the great, it's the best thing to do. Meeting the fight, 
after school is a bad idea. Bringing a gun to that fight is an even worse idea. And so that's what you were talking. It went from words, uh, exchanges, ideals, uh, petty beef to producing a weapon uh, and subsequently killing uh, young uh, J Jada Madrano Moore. Chief, Brad? Oh, obviously, it's a serious condition. Um, I think if this murder alone, if we lost one child, and in this case, Jada Matrano Moore says it's a very, very serious problem for us. Now, I, you know, everybody else can crunch the data and do whatever it is they do there, but I can tell you what the facts are. The facts are, for example, last year we arrested for the first time more youth than adults for armed carjackings. Um, the facts are that we also are seeing increasing numbers of these of shootings. Our youth are involved in uh, escalating violence, and the impact is what we are focused on. The impact is that we are seeing young people who are not only victimizing their own community members, but who are victimizing and killing each other. Um, now, from our standpoint, and I'm sure I speak for all of those who are involved in this team with me, the loss of life is breathtaking. And if it was one life, that would be too many. If we had one victim, that would be too many. Somebody, all of us, need to continue to do everything we can to make sure that this stops. We've done it here. We are arresting um, at a rate that is really admirable. You don't see these kinds of closure rates across the country. Seven out of 10 of these are, are um, resulting in arrest. You see the prosecutors here with her team and they're investigating. The government is sparing no resource. We're, you know, we're, but there's a whole ecosystem. The Department of Juvenile Services has a role to play. Parole and probation has a role to play. The court system, this is an ecosystem. And every part of it, the parents, communities, god mamas, aunties, dads, moms, everybody has a role to play. And what we are saying now is everybody um, should be singularly focused on not, you know, quarreling about, you know, whether one way or another, the number, what the, the impact on our community is unquestionable. It's unquestionable. People deserve to live in places that are safe, and our kids deserve not to die. Um, up right near their schools and in their homes and communities. That's that's what we feel. No, that's that's not. She, she was there. We, I don't want to characterize her as being part of a crew, okay? But she was there, and a a fight was there, and these people are known, and she stepped in between that when a gun was produced uh, and, and all, people can watch a fight. I don't think young people should be participating. That's a part of the participation that's going bad. But she was not part of any crew that we would say that right now. She was, she was there, the fight was happening. She knows these individuals. She's related to an individual. She steps in to stop that. To, and that right there, a person with a gun at a fight shot her and killed her. Well, I, you know, I, I'm not, the dad is not here, so I can't speak. I didn't read it. I didn't hear it. So I'll just go whatever the dad told you. I'm sure that's what he, what he meant. Go ahead. Yes, um, I know it's still early on in your investigation, but do you know where the suspect was all this time? Like, he was arrested, I'm sorry, the suspect was arrested on Thursday. Yeah, well, we don't know exactly where the suspect's movement were. We know that he was out. He was, he was doing, out and about. He was talking to people. He was going and living his, his, his life as if this did not occur. At every opportunity, uh, he could have stood up and said, uh, hey, this is me. We were looking for him. We put it out there. Other people had to tell it 
and say it. Uh, our great community heard our county executive uh, give praise to our community for stepping up. We ask them to step up. We come here. We say call crime solvers, call our homicide unit, call our, our tips line, give us any information any which way you can. And they did. And they told us about it. At any point in time, he could have done the same thing. But he didn't. And, we, and he left it to these fine uh, men and women who are standing over here behind me to do their job as the, the great investigators of this county and in this nation to find him, which they did, but right in, uh, in the back. I have a question, Chief. First of all, for you, uh, these five involve uh, students from both schools? The, the students so attended. From yeah. Students from uh, Flowers? And students students were at Duval High School and students, some students who were at Flowers. Well, you know, as I mentioned, the government is making every investment we can to ensure that our kids are productively engaged, uh, meaning we have, for example, invested in the summer youth enrichment program. We have a leadership program. We have a passport program. We have also collaborated with Hope in Action. So during the year, we have about 15 or 16 nonprofits who are working with us on the ground in communities for after school mentoring, um, to have violence interrupters. We have funded now a new mental health care and addictions care facility. We have a crisis mobilization center that is opening also um, at the end of this year that the government is also invested in for mental health to expand behavioral health services. Uh, we are working, again, to make sure that we're investing in the police department, investing in the police department, uh, growing the, the numbers of, of, of men and women who can work on this department. Um, we are, so we're doing everything we can from the government side. And the thing that we have to continue to do is to, to urge families, to urge community leaders, to urge everyone else in this ecosystem to get to work, to make sure that they are doing their part also to protect these children. Many of the children who we are seeing, first of all, they're under 16. They are not responsible for themselves. We, we, we continue to ask the question, where are their parents? The grandmothers, the aunties, where are those folks who have an affirmative responsibility to keep safe their children? We're going to do our part. The prosecutor's going to do hers. The police will do their job. But the ones who we are seeing in the streets who are participating in violence, their parents likewise have a tremendous role to play in ensuring that their kids are safe and that they are not dying or killing other people. You and then over here. Have you recovered as well? And was it a ghost gun? I noted it only fired one time, which suggests damage. Well, we have not recovered the weapon at this time. Our detectives are working diligently and following up on leads, uh, but we do not have the gun, the weapon in our, our possession and our protective custody at this time over here. Well, it, it, as you, in any case, in any homicide case or, or a case involving this type of violence, we are looking at that. We're making sure that we have the right person now. We're making sure that those people who were involved, that their roles were what they say they were. Uh, and we're going to figure that out here very shortly. Uh, but, it, you know, investigations are very tedious. And we, we make the moves the right way in the first place. Uh, and that's what they do best. Uh, and, you know, it could come down the road or not, right? At this point in time, the answer is no. Uh, we're going to go right here. She had not asked yet. I'm going to get back to you. I know you got 10 questions. Go ahead. <laughs> We don't know that, uh, first of all, that um, the, the gun was, was ever in either one of our schools, quite frankly. But as we talk about uh, the, uh, the backpack, the process of uh, ensuring that back, clear backpacks are uh, in each one of our high schools, of course, we're starting off in a phase-in process. Uh, Duval High School was a part of the second phase, which would have been in October. Uh, but we went ahead and moved forward with uh, the execution of that. 
the installation of, of those units at Duval uh, essentially the day after uh, this tragedy. Uh, the process has gone well. Uh, we feel like our community, we feel like our students, we feel like uh, our staff uh, are uh, excited about having that sense of security uh, in our schools. Uh, so we'll continue uh, with the, uh, the process in, in ensuring that each one of our high schools eventually has all of this equipment and has the opportunity to, uh, to finish the installation process uh, at some point this school year. All right, we're back, we got you now. Well, I wouldn't say we're not going to expect more arrests. We're investigating it. These, these uh, investigations are ongoing. If our detectives find that someone uh, did something other than what we know right now, and it, it can result in a charge, we're going to charge them. But we don't have anything going forward right now. Well, exactly. I think you, you heard of the uh, acting deputy chief, uh, O'Lair, he's, he's out here, who was talking to the committee uh, just a couple of days ago uh, and speaking up on this issue. Uh, I think this plays right into it, uh, that we have to be able uh, to do some things and, and get in regards to due process and rights and everything else, uh, but to resolve some of these issues, even with the public safety exception, uh, that some things need to occur. And, and this plays right into it. Uh, I will expound um, because the, the questions asked, you know, earlier. Uh, when we we have uh, have have dug into, we have become entrenched in a single singular ideology that our position is the only position that matters, and that right there causes us to have a divide. There are many solutions to getting to the results, positive results. And what we have in, in these laws, whether they are, are reformation laws or otherwise, what we have is the inability to see that there's a solution from all solutions from all sides. We're gonna have to, in this, in this delicate ecosystem that the uh, county executive mentioned, that involves all of these cogs that need to work together to have the greater good for young people, for emerging adults and otherwise, that we have to actually hear and listen to what other groups and other people are saying. Uh, some people may have this idea to tell us that we actually do not see what we see. It's the David Copperfield syndrome is what I named it. We actually see what we are seeing. Co the community, they see what they're seeing, they're experiencing what they're experiencing. And it is our obligation. We are obligated, it is necessary that we sit together, that we come up to viable solutions and we do not become entrenched in a singular ideology to believe our position is the only position that will get us to the end of the road. This has caused a great divide right here. And that is what we cannot accept because the residents, the community members have expressed to us that they will not accept this. So who are we speaking for? They want us to sit down together, they, don't, they want us to work together in this system, and they want us to come to meaningful results. And those results mean accountability, they mean responsibility, they mean transparency, and they mean trust. That's where we're at. You know, I forgot, may I just, Go ahead. so there was, to the question here, I forgot to give you a website um, about what more are we doing for kids. So we have a whole page for parents and family members who want to see uh, what resources are available for youth to go to mypgc.us backslash youth. And all of the programs for youth in the county are there and we'll continue adding them to that page. But that's a website uh, for any family who wonders how to find resources, activities, outlets for children uh, to keep them engaged. I'm sorry, I meant to, to give you that, that website. Thank you, Thank you so much.